Tui, and she doesn't have anybody walking in her doors. We solved that. We solved the problem. And the way that we solve the problem is not by spending a single cent in advertising. The way we do it is with guerrilla marketing, and that's exactly what we did at Ravenswood. At Ravenswood, we did not spend a cent. We went to the neighbors and we said, you send me people and I'll send you people and we'll send each other people and we'll have a relationship and you build relationships just like what these gals were doing over here. That's exactly how you do it. I just started a new grassroots wine group called Wine Country Chicks. And I invented the Chick Nick. And what this is, is a bunch of wine industry women who get together to rub each other's shoulders and to send each other business. And it's taken off. It's like, it's crazy. Well, that's how all these things are done. Uh, people go to destination restaurants. People will drive up this mountain. Are you kidding? They'll drive up this mountain. I sell wine to people all the time that drive up this mountain. I stand in Corazon in St. Helena, and I say, where are you visiting from and where are you going? And they'll say, mm, we're going to go to that casino. You know, I hear it all the time. I'm going to go to Harbin. Everybody goes to Harbin. Let's go to Harbin. Let's take our clothes off, you know. That's what everybody's doing. You know, let's go to Harbin. And, but they do it. And when they're doing it, you know what I say is I say, I think if you're going to Harbin, you need to take a little wine with you because they don't allow it. You've got to smuggle it in. That's actually what I say. But, but there's a lot of people up here. We have so many wonderful things going on up here. I love living up here. I lived in Sonoma for 20 years. And I loved it, raised my kids there, and I thought I could get rid of my kids if I moved far away from Sonoma. <laughs> and that didn't work out really well. Um, well, it's true, though. You know, it's really true. And, and y'all know my son, the, the kid in the wheelchair, 33-year-old kid, you see him in the wheelchair rolling along, goes to the fitness place and all those things. Well, I didn't get rid of him, but I got rid of the daughters. And so now we're up here, and we love it, and we want to open a restaurant up here, but we're watching it. We've been watching this same roller coaster that we're all on together. We came up here in 2005, horrors, bought a house, terrifying. We came up here with storage lockers full of restaurant equipment and decided, wait, hold on. And so we haven't done anything. And I've been selling wine for these guys. Oh, top of the mountain, let's talk about going up the dirt road. There's people in this audience who have been up the dirt road. So anybody who thinks you can't sell wine at the top of a windy road, I got some gals here joined me up at Kane. Okay, you can be up a windy road. <laughs> it's okay. You just gotta communicate, you gotta tell people that you're there. I didn't know where your fruit stand was because I didn't know. Why don't I know this? I drive by it every day of my life. And I didn't I don't know if your farmer's market goes year round. I don't know the hours of the Green View room. It makes me crazy. I never know. I can I can never figure it out. I, you know, and I'm semi literate. <laughs> you know, semi. So so I'm, obviously, I'm ad-libbing this, but what I wanted to say is that I have every confidence that I'm in the right place. I know that this is going to be a fabulous place to have a restaurant and a business and to have employees, because that is what I want to do. I am here not just to have a restaurant and a wine bar. Obviously, I want a wine bar. I am here to employ people, and so is my husband. My husband currently works for Sutter Home, to put it in perspective. And, yeah. And in this community up here, I, off the top of my head, I can name 30 people who work at wineries in St. Helena. The place is packed with them. I mean, there's just so much cross-pollinating, there's so much potential, and it's so easy. But our communication with the newspaper, we've been talking about this a little bit, is we just have all these communication problems. And that is the reason that I am hired. You hire me to come into your winery, and you already have a good product. You just, people need to know about it. They need to know that you're there. It's the same thing here. I will come to your restaurant and I will blow a bunch of money. I'll go to your fruit stand. I will rent a space from you, but you got, I gotta know about it. If I don't know about it, if you're not informing me, no, you know. So that, that's what I have to say. <laughs> the potential's there. We have it all up here. We are so lucky. It's such an exciting time to be here, but the communication is terrible, terrible. And I brought the hard hat because I was gonna say snarky things about buildings because I was there when they built the new buildings. But I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yes, do you have a question, Steve? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's gonna, what is, what is it going to take for you to open a restaurant? A business plan. Okay. So you're working on it. I am, but I'm, I get so distracted. I'm really distracted. It's, it's <laughs> terrible. Like right, I'm here right now. This is so distracting. 
And, and then I got the wine country chicks thing, that's a little distracting. Oh, oh, and I started working for Margo at Enoteca. Anybody go to Enoteca in Calistoga? Margo's had a wine shop there for 16 years. She's a rock star, she, she's a great wine buyer, but she's not in the 21st century. She needs to, to do her social media, she needs to know how to advertise, and that's what I do. I run computers, Herb knows this, I'm a talker. Yes. Computers, yes. You know what I paid for it? When I first, when I first moved up here, we were looking at nine hundred thousand dollars. Shannon got it for a third of that. I'm so glad I didn't spend nine hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> right? So yes, I actually have sat down with him recently. I love that place. I need a farmer because I'm not a farmer. Yeah. She's like, no, I hear a farmer. Yeah. <laughs> The Bohemian. We the call Bohemian. We call it the Bohemian. It's the Princess Place, and I've been here since '86. Oh, all right. Yeah. No, it, it's an awesome place. Maybe. Read Let's see. Look, watch. watch. He's, he's edging towards me over here. Quit talking, Holly. Quit talking. Yes, I'm extremely excited. I have talked to them. Um, I've thought about putting a place in, in piece there, across from Mugshots, where you guys are at. I look at the big, at the yellow house that is now Chef Steve's. Oh, no, I'm serious. I've, I've been looking up a while. It's just trying to pick the right place and put the right thing together and get me to quit my job long enough. But I'm down to just Enotech and Calistoga. So it's better. I, I just put Cora's in last month. So it's, you know, here we go. Yes? Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, Holly never does anything the normal way, so we folded her questions in with her presentation, which is great. And we'll have more time to talk about that during the panel discussion afterwards. So um, our next our next speaker um, is Will Tuttle, who I've uh, come to know over the last maybe three or four months due to some community uh, forums and workshops, uh, and his lovely wife, Madeline. And, um, He's a great person. He's, he travels all around the world talking about the World Peace Diet. And he's a very accomplished fellow. And uh, he sent me this bio uh, this afternoon, so I just thought I'd just put it up there for you to see. Uh, did you bring any CDs and artwork with you? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Okay, so maybe during the intermission or after you can uh, show people that. Um, we take about a 10% commission, uh. but uh, other than that, you're free to take what you want. Uh, okay, so uh, next up is Will. He's also an accomplished musician, and he almost came with his digital piano. But I think we'll save that for the digital for the Creative Arts Club. Right. Uh, David Neff told me that he's actually a very fine pianist. It's great to be here, Madeline. Uh, this is my wonderful spouse, Madeline, and she's a visionary artist from Switzerland. These are a few of our CDs. Uh, I'm the musician, and Mal is the artist, if you want to come look at them later. And we have one together of her playing flute and me playing the piano also. And we lived basically for 17 years full time after we left uh, Healdsburg uh, in an RV traveling all around North America doing events, doing basically concerts, lectures, seminars on developing intuition and on meditation and on compassion for animals and healing. And, um, and then I wrote a book called The World Peace Diet about, well, it came out at the end of 2005, and uh, I've been uh, traveling, we've been actually living full time in an RV the whole time. As we were traveling for 17 years, um, going, putting on about 150 events a year, we had pretty much always one eye open where it would be a good place to maybe buy a house and settle down. And we looked in a lot of places in Florida and Arizona and New England and Michigan and a whole, whole bunch of places. And we ended up, uh, we've been here a little less than a year now. Uh, after 17 years, we've settled here and we love it, actually. It's a, it's, and I love just, we're both um, jog, not only a walker, and I'm a jogger, and we love to just see all the love and care that you all put into the homes here. And uh, 
My background essentially is um, in education, uh, in world religions, and in sustainable community, uh, and in uh, animal rights and animal welfare, animal uh, compassion for animals. And um, my sense is really that we have um, essentially a situation in, in the United States, I think in the world, where things are changing uh, rapidly. And uh, in many ways, the administration, the bankers, and so forth have taken a sledgehammer to the economy and uh, you know, outsourcing jobs overseas and so forth. And I don't think we have the luxury to continue to think about doing things the way we always did them. The planet can't, su can't support the kind of, um, of violence toward ecosystems and animals and people uh, who don't have a lot of money. And um, so I think we, it's really time for us to question a lot of the official stories in our society and build communities uh, where we're growing our own food and taking care of each other on a local level. I think the government's gonna be falling apart probably in a lot of ways. And the, the larger economy already is starting to collapse in a lot of ways. And so I think um, it's good for us to see the beauty that we have here and the possibilities that we have here and work together to help each other as best we can. And so we, we, we've just been here a little less than a year, but I have to say I was, uh, besides loving it and just loving the, the beauty here and hiking and seeing the uh, deer and I saw wild pigs actually across the road and <laughs> um, uh, lots of animals, lots of beautiful animals, turkeys and foxes and, and so forth and, and birds. Um, but to, do, to, try to, to try to make this community, my vision, I guess, would be to try to do the best we can to work together. I don't have all the answers at all. I, I think we all, this is the idea, is to draw on each other's wisdom to, um, to use our resources in ways that will enhance this community and draw, pe draw people here who care about the earth and, and create something beautiful, a garden. And I was kind of shocked to see that the same thing that's been happening on the, on the outer level, where you basically have a wealthy elite that, that somehow has a sense of entitlement. If we're gonna take the money and use what we want it, and use it for, and the heck with everybody else. That's in many ways happening right here uh, in, in this community, this sense of, sort of sense of entitlement. And uh, um, a lot of, you know, to have a healthy community, we have to have feedback, we have to have communication, we have to talk to each other. And the fact that we weren't really allowed to have uh, you know, surveys done to find out what kind of things we want to have here mm -hmm. and so forth, I think we should, uh, I mean, I would just suggest basically, that's my, my main point here, I guess, is that we would, be, we, would, we would be really wise to realize that uh, human birth is precious. We only have a little bit of time here on this planet. What are we going to be doing? How do we contribute? to making a better world for our children and grandchildren and to a sustainable community of joy and creativity and peace. And I think it's time for us to work together in questioning the fundamental assumptions uh, of a lot of what we're doing here in the, in the community and in a loving way with each other and, and just work together to, to create more avenues of communication and um, there's, there's just, my sense is there's, there's a, sort of a, uh, a, a block of the energy. You know, there's a, there's a splitting of the community uh, between people who are trying to run it in a certain way and a whole lot of people who would like, I think, to see something new blossoming. And the land that we have and the resources that we have, I think it's very important for us to realize that as things really change, we're going to have to depend on each other and to really focus on, I would say concretely, community gardens, on a really a healthy ecosystem, not using pesticides and chemicals, organic food. Uh, I'm totally into plant-based. I mean, I've been a vegan for 33 years, and so is Madeline. And um, so I, I just think to minimize our environmental footprint, to eat locally organic plant-based foods is the best way to cut water use and pollution and land use and to try to live responsibly in a way that we are, um, at the end of our lives, we have not just 
than caring only about ourselves and getting what we want for ourselves and getting rich or whatever, but to really think about what kind of planet we're gonna leave for the future generations, what kind of forest, what kind of health, uh, and question the official stories, question the official um, um, capitalist mentality, essentially, that we just get what we can for ourselves uh, and try to create a, a community of, of kindness and compassion for all living beings, including uh, all the animals, too. So that's my little spiel. And <laughs> it's basically, I guess, it comes down to this idea of, you know, there's two guys in a boat, and one guy is just um, on one end of the boat, and the other guy's on the other end of the boat. One guy starts drilling a hole in, in the boat, and the other guy says, hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? And the guy says, hey, don't leave me alone. You know, it's my end of the boat. I'm drilling the hole in. <laughs> to realize, you know, we're all in the same boat. And that we, um, I think the more we begin to think in terms of uh, kindness and compassion for animals and supporting the creativity uh, of this community and creating structures of communication with each other, because I just, I, you know, since I've been here, it seems like all the, all the only official communication comes from the, from, from the board of directors. You know, they're the only ones talking to us. How do we talk with each other? And how do we create ways of really bringing the resources of wisdom and intelligence and creativity of this community uh, in an empowering way uh, so that we can create a, something that actually makes, uh, makes our lives better? Because I think this is such a beautiful place. I'm, I'm just delighted to be here. And I love you all. Thanks so much for the work you're doing. And let's just go forward and make a better world for all of us. Thank you. Hey, Will. Yeah. Um, practically speaking, what do you think is the most important thing to do right now? What's the first step we could take to improve the community? To what improve do, the what community? Do you think the, the biggest issue up right now that needs to be addressed? Well, I think uh, personally, you know, and I, like I say, I've only been here less than a year, but it's pretty obvious to me, and a lot of that time we've been, you know, we've actually been out touring and traveling, but, I, but just basically looking around and talking to people and feeling into it, I think. Um, the, the problem is, you know, we have uh, resources that we could be using for uh, wonderful things. You know, the, the lake is suffering. There's so many possibilities of creating uh, um, ways that we can support each other. Like, I think it would be so neat to have, like, like creative arts, education, maybe, ha maybe have a fund for people who need, maybe, maybe you know, creating cooperative, um, ways to help help each other, like like be more neighbors, and so I think the biggest problem is, um, a, 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 I hate to say it, but, but basically a government system that is really not, I would say not just non-democratic but anti-democratic. I mean, it's really I think it's yeah yeah I think it's specifically trying to stifle the democratic process here, and that it's got a stranglehold on the community. On the, on the purse strings and on our, uh, on our, on our um, possibilities for really being creative and, and uh, doing something that's not just in the interest of the way it always has been, specifically putting huge amounts of money, for example, into the golf course, the restaurant, those kinds of things, which you know, not that many people really use. And I, I think you know, this, these, these funds could be used for so many fantastic things that would be different. Uh, that would be available for everyone, you know, and um, I, I know nothing against golf specifically, except that uh, it's, uh, well, I, mean, I was born and raised, you know, in, in a, at a golf, a golf course. Uh, I was a golfer my whole life growing up, but I always carried my own clubs. <laughs> I was a caddy. I mean, it was the good old days, you know, and I just think, you know, this whole thing, we, we should really um, live our lives I mean, the times are changing, and um, I think, you know, I can't go out there in the golf course without getting thrown off if I don't have a golf club. So I, I think, you know, we can create, not, not against the golf course, we have to have it, but I just think we have to really be, think, take every, the whole community's interest into account, not just a certain small segment of the community's interest into account. So I think, you know, improving the democratic process,